Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to sit down. It's such a wonderful day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, my name's Tony. I'm the inventor of a compost system called the Hot Bin. And um, what we want to talk to you today is about hot composting. How do we actually do it? Is it worthwhile doing? So my, my journey into composting started when I was 15. We had an allotment and the gentleman next door who was about 90 showed me how to compost. We set up our bins and we had great compost for many, many years. I then did the traditional thing where I went off to university, shared houses for many, many years and didn't compost until a few years later, many years later. But when I did restart my composting, I did the traditional thing. I got my old pallet frames, I nailed them together, created a pallet, filled it up, thought I was doing everything right, got to the end of the year, no compost, big pile of waste. So I then went off and bought one of these black garlic bins from the council, nice and cheap, put that next to it, filled that up the next year, it also filled up and nothing seemed to be happening. Got to the end of two years, there were carrot peels and turnips coming out the top of the bin. And uh, we opened it one day and uh, my wife noticed a little furry friend jumping out the compost bin. And she came indoors and she said, we have two choices, sort it out or stop composting. And that started me on a little journey into um, how to act, act, actually compost effectively. And I read lots of websites looking for a, a compost bin that would work quickly. And the more I read, the more I realised that actually a lot of the compost systems out there don't work effectively and there's an awful lot of issues. So I, I decided to build my own um, and, and I spent a lot of time researching it and going through many, many different designs. And there's a little bit of my, my journey in here this morning. So when we talk about hot composting, what do we actually mean? Does anybody here ever put a thermometer into their compost and test the temperature? It doesn't surprise me because um, very, very few people do. But if we did that, to give you a comparison, what we normally think about cold composting is anything that happens up to about 20 degrees centigrade. So today in here it's 20 degrees, but normally over the UK, zero in winter, five degrees in spring, 20 degrees if we're lucky in summer. So you can average that as about 10 degrees centigrade. If you have a, a shower in the morning, your shower is normally between 30 and 40 degrees to give you a comparison. If you put your hand on your radiator, um, during winter, that's normally between 50 and 60. So we define hot composting as 40 to 60, so in that kind of radiator temperature. So really, really quite warm. So why might we be interested in hot composting? So I'm going to give you a couple of quick things and then we're going to look at those in a bit more detail. So it's faster, we can do more things, it should take less time and effort, and hopefully the quality of the compost coming out the other end should be better. So let's look at those in a bit more detail. Why is hot composting better? I, I don't want to go into too much of the science, but there is um, an equation in science that sort of says for every extra 10 degrees centigrade, the rate of reaction is double. So if we say the UK is 10 degrees and that's one, you go to 20 degrees, it's twice as fast, 30 degrees, four times, 40, six, eight times, 16 times, 32. So if you get up to 60 degrees centigrade, it's going to go 32 times faster. So what does that mean in reality? Well, if something normally takes 12 months in a cold bin, in theory, it would take 12 days in a hot compost system. Now, please don't go away thinking everything composts in 12 days. It doesn't. We have easy to digest materials, things like grass and comfrey and nettles, very hard to digest materials like wood and, and um, things like that. So it, overall, you get an average um, to that. And you'd be typically looking at 30 to 60 days for a hot compost, composting system. Um, sometimes people come up to me and sort of say, well, where do I plug in the hot bin? And so I say, no, you don't, you don't plug it in. The heat comes from the bacteria. So a, a little bit like when we go for a run, we burn off more food, we produce heat as a byproduct. When the bacteria break down the food, they also produce heat as a byproduct. And what we do is we allow that heat to build up, and that's what creates the temperature. So can we, can we add more things into a hot composting system than we can into a normal one? So if I ask, I would imagine most people here do probably do a little bit of composting. Does anybody put cooked food waste in their compost bin? Meat, fish, anything like that? Generally the answer to that is always no. And the reason we say don't put those things in your compost bin normally is it'll attract the odour that it produces, will attract flies, will attract vermin, and one of the last things you want is to open your compost bin and have a mass of flies and maggots come at you or have the little um, rat come out. But all those materials are biodegradable. And normally what happens in the UK at the moment is your council will collect them in a food waste collection system, and they'll take them off to a great big composting bin, and they'll compost the material, and then they'll sell the compost back to you. 
So it's not that they're not compostable, it's how we need to achieve it. And it, it is quite interesting if you look at um, the, the amount of food waste we create, they, they calculate on average about 250 kilos. So that's a huge, great big container of food waste comes out of each house a year. Now, every household is a little bit different. Some of us produce very little, some of us produce quite a lot more. But there's lots of things like you know, leftover pizza, pasta, bits of rice, cooked potatoes and chips scraped off the plate and into the bin. So, so when we look at the garden situation, the more things that come out of the garden we can put in here. Who's ever sort of taken out a layer of compost, spread it onto the vegetable patch, come back a few weeks later to see tomatoes, melons, weeds, all sprouting in this beautiful compost. It's quite a common occurrence. And what actually happens there is you're putting in the seeds into the compost bin, but they don't break down. One of the things about hot composting is the high temperature, it actually kills that germination process. So you can generally put in all weeds, all seeds into a hot compost system and they won't regrow. Uh, in my garden I've got a particularly nasty little um, weed that regrows out of the tiny little rhizome. So it's, no matter how many times you dig it up, you always end up with a little bit. And it, it came with a particular plant that I, I lifted and carried to my new house. It's in a particular part of the garden and every year pull the bits up, I put them in the compost bin, and I put that compost elsewhere in the garden, and I haven't got that weed anywhere else. So I know that it is actually breaking down quite successfully. Um, we can also look at things like, quite often people ring us up and sort of say, well, um, I've treated my garden with um, a weed killer. Can I put the grass with a weed killer on there? And the answer is yes, you can. But a lot of people don't realize that most of today's pesticides and herbicides are actually made out of organic chemicals which, which of course kill, kill off uh, various bits and pieces, but to bacteria, it's just food. It's just like feeding them an extra bit of diet, and they'll, and they'll eat through those quite successfully. And that stretches all the way through to diseased plants. Uh, quite, quite often sort of people say, oh, it's a diseased plant, I'm either going to burn it, but I'm not allowed to burn it in my area, because there's smoke issues, so I'm going to give it to the council. But what the council will do with your diseased plant is they take it to the compost, they compost it, and they sell it back to you. So the, it does break down um, quite easily in hot composting. Um, is, it, is it less hassle? Well, um, above 40 degrees, you don't get any flies or maggots. They basically die off, so that, that's quite good. Um, you don't have to turn a hot composting system. The, the way it works, it works as a chimney. So as we know, hot air rises in a chimney, draws it up and draws air in. So if you want to keep it aerated, um, there's a little tip that we'll look at um, how to do that. 